Good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar on succession planning and maximizing the value of your business. Um, many of you probably already know that the webinar is part of our exit strategy series that Sunbelt Business Brokers offers to our clients. So if you would like to see any of the others uh, in the future, just go to our webpage and there's probably around 10 of those that I think could be helpful in selling your business. Uh, these webcast presentations are here to inform business owners so that when the time's right for you to move on you know, to your next venture or retirement, you're going to be well positioned to maximize what you walk away with at closing. As you probably already know, that timing is very important. And you know, making sure that your business is in the best possible shape when you are ready is really the key. Uh, I'm Joan Young, the president of Sunbelt Business Brokers. And by the way, Sunbelt is the largest uh, business brokerage network in the world with over 240 offices worldwide. And our office is based in San Jose. And we've been here for 15 years helping sellers throughout the Bay Area and really beyond uh, to achieving their dreams of moving on to either retirement or you wouldn't believe some of the things we hear that people are going on to. Um, at the end of the webinar, I'm more than glad to answer any of your questions directly. You're, you can enter your questions in the chat box on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, and we will get to just as many questions as possible. If you would, um, I think I have everybody on mute, but you may want to put yours on mute as well. And let's get started. Today we're going to go over uh, who Sunbelt is, what is succession planning, how you value your business, and, um, and how to build value for your business as well, and some really strong exit strategy tips for you. Some people are saying, gosh, why should I be talking about reselling my business now? Well, I talk to people when they buy a brand new business about their succession planning because I think it's so important to keep your end, your end game in mind. Um, everybody, including myself, will be selling our business someday. So you know, it's good to be thinking ahead so that you can get the most out of your business. Um, I don't know if you all have heard, but the biggest wave in businesses for sale is coming. And we want you to maximize your return that's really going to be good for you and good for um, the buyers. And Sunbelt is a great resource for you. We feel very strongly that an educated um, seller makes a much better seller and they make much more at the on the closing table by being informed about what they're doing instead of waiting till the last minute. I meet with people frequently that says, "Gee, I never even thought of selling my business down the road," and they are just it's it's a mess, and it'll probably take them two or three years to get ready to be even able to put it on the market. Um, so we do not only existing franchises but many other. Um, industries we're very familiar with and work with all the time, manufacturing, wholesale distribution, um, service businesses, both commercial and um, uh, residential, so to speak. Um, everything, most large businesses, small businesses, our range are typically from a business doing a half a million in revenue to 20 million in revenue. Just a little bit about us. Um, We've been around since 1978, and I think I mentioned 240 offices. We've been ranked, uh, doesn't say it here, but since 1995 as the number one business brokerage uh, business in Entrepreneur Magazine. Um, I've been helping people since 1980. Um, I do have my CBI uh, distinction, which is I think there's maybe 5% of business brokers that have it. Um, so that's just a little bit about Sunbelt. I think this is just uh, a really good illustration. Properly plan today to harvest value from your business tomorrow. And I think so many of us forget that our business is probably one of the biggest assets we have. And we've built equity in it over the years. And you want to be able to get as much as possible. And the more you know, the better it will be. And it will help you, I think, just knowing when is the best time to do it. 
so first steps. I think you really need to look, are you ready? Begin with the end in mind. Um, I think it's important to know how long it typically takes to sell a business. We're going to talk about that. You need to plan ahead um, for the steps you're going to take when the business is sold. You know, what are you going to do afterwards? That's one of the first questions I ask a, a seller. Do you know what you're going to do? And if they say, oh my gosh, no. And I'll say, well, then you're probably not ready because, you know, the last thing you want to do is to regret your decision and be bored to death and not have any plan uh, going forward. Definitely, we've had sellers that are 40 years old and sellers that are 70, and the 40-year-old, um, you know, started it when he was maybe 20, 21, and he was just uh, burnt out, bored with doing the same thing, wanted to move on, and was going to get into another business. So you need to just make sure what your motivation is and what your reasons are for selling, and can you afford to do it? Um, we had a company that was ready to go, wanted to um, sell, had three offers from us, and then the accountant stepped in and said, you know, you don't want to, you know, pay all that tax right now for your business. You were only 40, I think he was 48 at the time. Um, so you and your accountant need to be on the same page too because you don't want to get ready to sell and spend all the effort it takes to get there and then have your accountant uh, say, no, you're not ready. Um, and by the way, you do need to realize that you're the one that makes the decision, not your accountant. And there may be other important uh, decisions in sync with your selling. Are your children um, just starting college? Then this might not be the best time to sell. You have to look at many other factors. Today's market, I know many of you might be asking, you know, are people really buying businesses now? Are banks financing? Should I sell now? And just a little bit about the current situation with buyers. Um, I think I've been doing this a long time, and I've seen buyers be a little more cautious than they've ever been. Um, you know, they're discriminating, but I think they're looking very closely at cash flow. They want to be able to maintain the same lifestyle that they've had, and they're really looking at cash flow. I know um, I was talking to a seller yesterday, and she was saying that, you know, my business has all these contracts, and I have um, so many loyal clients, and it's been very consistent over the last few years, so shouldn't I get a much higher multiple because of that? And the bottom line is buyers are looking at your, your seller's discretionary earnings, or if it's a larger company, your EBITDA, so, but they're, they're really wanting to make sure cash flow is going to be able to support their lifestyle, pay their debt service, and um, give them a return on their investment. Are they nervous now? I, I see a big difference of the buyers now versus before the recession. They are nervous, and many of them are you know, going to be waiting for the next six weeks um, for after the election to make a decision. But um, bank lending is tighter than it was. I'm seeing it opening up some, but um, that's being a big decision on people moving ahead as well. I think it's really important we look at what's coming up in the future. And this baby boomer um, phenomena is, is, is really a real thing right now. Um, we're continuing to age and the U.S. is going to be experiencing truly historical levels, levels of businesses hitting the market, which isn't good for you because only the really good, strong, well-positioned companies will sell because there are going to be fewer buyers and more sellers. Um, amazing, 7 million small businesses in the U.S. And we're not talking the, the mid-market, we're talking small, small businesses. And most of them are in the position to sell within the next 5 to 15 years. So you add that to just the normal resales that are going on, um, there will be over 12 million businesses resales between now and then, and between now and 2026. Uh, so for some of you, it's going to uh, put you in a better position to do it before that huge wave comes. So we're already ready to see, see some things. This uh, CNBC article 
uh, in May said that business brokers around the country have found that more people are listing their businesses for sale in 2000 in this year. Um, it was pretty quiet in 2010 and 11, and what I think some sellers are experiencing, and I hope you're you're included in this group, is that 2011 you started seeing coming back, 2012 it's looking much more solid so you're, you think you're ready, um, or some of you are. So there are definitely much, many more listings. Um, so there's a, there's a big boomer group that's ready to retire and they've been waiting for conditions to get better before they sell. So I think 2013 is going to be huge. Uh, as far as what's coming on the market, but probably not as big as what's happening five years down the road. Um, yeah, I'd already mentioned that's not particularly good news for you. Um, the market will shift, and the shift uh, dramatically to buyer's market during this time. Uh, buyers will be very picky about who they uh, go with, and so business owners need to plan now, and to, this is going to help ensure your sellability. And, you know, they're going to be wanting to look at many different facets that we're going to go over to help you make your business look better. So there really is some good news, though, and I've been really pleased to see, I mean, we just uh, closed a deal on Tuesday, and the bank was uh, very favorable in lending to this buyer. Now, the buyer did have experience in the industry in which he purchased. Uh, he was in the construction industry, and so the bank felt very comfortable about that. Um, the seller was willing to carry a small, a small note, um, so that helped too. But interest rates are low now, um, six and a quarter to six and a half, and leases. I've, I haven't had any problem with uh, a landlord letting a seller transfer his lease or get a new lease, if that's even better than what you have. Um, but entrepreneurs are definitely coming out voluntarily even if they're employed and they want to uh, buy a business or someone who sold a business years ago and now wants to get back into it. They could only play so much golf. Um, but there's still many layoffs going on. And so um, they're forced uh, into possibly looking at their own business. I thought you might find some of this information helpful um, is that you know we have a new normal now than we used to have that downsizing is just a part of life. And, you know, we probably have neighbors and friends, all of us, that have been squeezed out. And I think a lot of my clients have said that companies say they're not discriminating, but I have many very qualified, um, maybe overqualified for the jobs that they were looking for, uh, that they really were squeezed out of the marketplace. And um, now they're, you know, looking at businesses. Um, but we're, I think this is here to stay. Um, we're going to continue to have layoffs, um, and 7 million were laid off since November, and the uh, unemployment is still near 9%. Uh, this is three years later, so I think this is it's going to be, be like this for a while. Um, okay, so unemployment is going to remain persistently high since job creations will barely keep up with the growth of labor force. Um, so, when to sell? You know, only you know that. I have more people give me the facts about their business. I look at their books, and they'll say, well, should I sell? And it has so much more to do uh, with you than just looking at your numbers. I can look at um, I probably tell more people, no, you're not ready, than yes, you are, it, looking at financials. Um, banks typically want to look at three years, and they, they'd like to see growth over those three years, or being flat is acceptable too, but if it's going down, uh, banks really aren't, aren't that interested. Um, but just I, I think it's just so important for you to understand the market conditions before you take a leap and uh, get a good feel about it. So, resales, selling an existing business. Um, it's definitely different than selling a mid-market business, and we're talking about businesses under $5 million right now. Um, you know, different terms, different uh, strategies. Sellers are going after different kind of buyers in a mid-market, and we're going to talk about the difference between a strategic buyer versus a financial buyer. 
Um, but one of the big differences in a small business is owners are usually very involved in the day-to-day -day operations. Yes, you may have some managers in different departments, but as I say, oftentimes it's all about Bob. Um, it's so important for a small business to have financial statements and have them clean, um, up-to-date, and when I say financial statements, um, I'm typically referring to tax returns. If you're thinking about selling in 2013, file your tax returns as soon as you can early in the year. You don't want to hold up the process because those aren't done. A buyer will not move forward until he sees them. So you're saying, well, what about people selling in November and De December of this year? Well, they will have had the tax returns the previous years, and they'll have profit and loss and balance sheets and current um, add backs, and which we're going to talk about in a little bit too. Um, and I know you all are thinking, well, gosh, all these years I've been, my accountant and I have been trying to minimize uh, the income I show to, so I could pay less taxes. So that's okay. That's very normal for small business. But um, as a broker, what we do is we recast the financials um, to show what the true owner's benefits have been. So, and we're going to get into more detail about that. Um, in a small business, it's very important to keep confidentiality. You don't want to do any open marketing. Um, you don't want to have an, uh, a sign on the front of your, your business uh, for sale. Uh, that's just not how it's done. Very different than real estate where you have the neon sign, if you could, out in front of your house going for sale. You want everybody to know about it. You really don't want your employees to know about it. Um, and I know if you'll say, well, I have to tell this one person. Well, talk to me about that before, and I'll tell you some more stories. Um, what happens so often is your employees do not realize how valuable they are, and if they find out that you're selling the business, they automatically will think, well, they'll be, they'll be gone with the new owner, and they start looking for work, and they may leave before you find a good qualified buyer, and now you're kind of left holding the bag, so to speak. So. Um, let's talk about um, how small businesses are valued. There's many different methods, but um, you know, years ago everybody would look at uh, gross sales, and that method really does not tell the whole story of the business. Um, buyers, of course, are only looking, or one of the biggest things they're looking at is how much money can they make from it. So that's why we do adjusted uh, financials and we recast it showing all the other personal things that you were able to take out of the business. Um, and then of course now so much of the concern is, uh, yeah, I like the business, but can I get it financed? Um, and oftentimes the banks are not lending and sellers will need to be carrying uh, a big portion of it, but we're going to talk more about that and what kind of risk that is. Um, you definitely will, if a small business has very little cash flow, and I met with one a couple days ago, I think they're making 25000 a year, um, and they don't have very good uh, financials, so what they're going to be doing is just selling off the assets of their business. It was a small staging company, um, you know, realtor stage homes, uh, to help sell them more quickly. Right now that's not doing so well because they're selling within two to three weeks. Um, but they have a lot of sofas, a lot of chairs, a lot of tables, 10,000 square feet of inventory, so to speak. And so they're gonna, they would do much better selling off the assets. Um, but profitable businesses are going to definitely sell for more than assets. And that is by using seller's discretionary earnings. We call that SDE. Let's look at that. So SDE is um, seller's discretionary earnings. Also, owner's benefit is a common valuation method. Um, so we've talked about most business owners uh, do their taxes not to pay taxes. So that recasting is absolutely necessary. So basically, it's... Um, your earnings, um, your bottom line, plus the owner's benefits, and any one-time expenses. So if you had to replace a major piece of equipment uh, in your machine shop in this last uh, 12 months, 
then of course we'll add that back because that won't be an expense to somebody. Or if you had to change the roof or if you had to, um, you know, there's many, you know, if you did some major remodeling that won't have to be done, we get to add back that to the um, earnings and, um, and any of your benefits that you were able to take out. So owner's benefits, when it's talking about owner's benefits, that's talking about your auto, your insurance, your retirement plans, or any other expenses the business pays for the owner. Salary, um, and then we come up with seller's discretionary earnings. So basically for small business, it's, it's a multiple of seller's discretionary earnings. Um, so the multiple in retail, I, I, I put two to three, but it's typically two times for retail, maybe 2.5 if it's really positioned well, has a good history, good solid earnings. Um, but uh, that's, that's typically two times plus um, inventory. But when you talk about manufacturing companies we've sold, distribution companies, you can get more, three times and more, uh, just depending on your capital equipment, the age of the capital equipment, and the cash flow. Um, so if you've heard, oh, I heard so-and-so got a 6%, six percent, six times instead of a three times, they're not talking SDE, they're talking EBITDA, and EBITDA does not include the owner's salary. So stick with me on SDE on this. Um, and it typically is a multiple. But it's going to, it's definitely going to vary depending on um, cash flow, um, how is it, is it financeable, is it all about Bob? Um, that's going to vary whether you're 2 to 2.4, 2.6. Um, and buyers will pay higher multiples for businesses with higher cash flow. So, um, you know, we've sold many businesses that are making over a million in cash flow, they're going to get a higher multiple than the business that was making 150 to 200. Most small businesses, um, but there are definitely many exceptions, will be looking for a financial buyer versus uh, other companies are looking for strategic buyers. But both of them are looking for return on their investment. Uh, financial buyers are basically, they, they, they're looking to replace their job that they just left. Uh, they want salary, they want to cover their living expenses, and they're going to be looking at the past in your business. They're going to want to see three years financials and uh, get recasted financials for all that. Strategic buyers different. That would be somebody, let's say if you were in a... Um, manufacturing company and you manufactured widgets and you were in the South Bay. There may be a company similar to yours up in San Francisco or Southern California that would want to purchase your company for expansion purposes. Um, you know, they want exposure here. Others may be doing it um, just for new buying power. You may be in with some uh, manufacturer and have special pricing that they would like to take advantage of. Um, some just want to see vertical growth. There's many different reasons, but strategic buyers, um, I was looking at a business, um, a seller yesterday, and she's a small business. It'll prob business will probably sell for maybe 400000 but hers is 100% strategic buyer. She's in a niche human uh, resource company that only other companies uh, would want to acquire her. So be thinking of that. Is there somebody else that may want to acquire you? Um, you never want to get it so there's just one company. We've had people call us and say, you know, we have a buyer for our business. Would you help us sell it? And yes, of course, we can do that, but you really don't want to just have one buyer. You want to get this on the market, which will help the one buyer that you may have. That may be your buyer, but it will keep the price up versus if there's just one buyer looking at your company. Um, you don't have as much... Um, uh, control over that price. They're sort of driving it. Um, of course, you can always walk away, but it, you, you typically want to have uh, multiple people looking at your business at one time. Um, a, a big, another difference on the strategic buyer, they're really looking at the future. They're going to be doing performas down the road, and they're going to look at the past, but the, they're looking forward more than anything else. 
um, the value of your business does not always equal the price. Your, your value may be X, but a strategic buyer may think it's worth Y, and that could be quite a bit more. So in some cases, larger companies, we don't even put a price on the business because we don't know what that, um, uh, the terms would be best. We know what the value came out to, or the, what it equaled, but maybe not the value to the other person. So terms are so important. You know, so often people say, I'm not taking anything under half a million dollars for my business. And we look at it and that's possible, but will that be as attractive to you if you have to carry most of it? Or would you rather carry a note and be paid over time for all the advantages that a note can have, and right now you're probably thinking, what? Um, how, could it, how could it be positive? There's many reasons, and we'll get to that. Um, we have a, a transaction right now where the, one of the buyers, there's two, but one of the buyers is a cash buyer, and that is uh, looking very positive to the seller versus the other one um, going to SBA and um, just having to take more time and having the seller carry some. So typically you're going to get less for your business if it's all cash. The buyer wants a premium uh, because of them doing that. They're tying up their money versus leveraging it and using it um, for something else. But terms must allow a new owner to be able to service their debt, to pay back that note every month. So it, that's why SBA is good for small businesses if you qualify because the buyer has 10 years to pay it off. So that monthly payment is going to be much more attractive than if they have a three-year note with you. The payments might be too hefty uh, with the cash flow that the business is um, throwing off. Um, they need a new owner, must make sure that the business is making enough for them to make a salary and also generate a return on their investing uh, investment. Financing is an important, an important element of the sale and it's something that I will talk to you about early on in the game and decide you know, how much of the sales price are you willing to carry. Um, one of the women I talked with this week, she just said, why would I use SBA? I could be the bank and I can make 6.5% on my money. As long as it's secured and it's uh, personally guaranteed, why would I not? And she has a very good point. She's going to make quite a bit more on her money, and she said, I don't want to do it in three years. I'd rather make even more and make it five years. She didn't want to do ten, but uh, three to five years is the average if you're carrying a note. So most brokers advise their sellers to consider some portion of it uh, being financed. And let's go over the advantages. Uh, the first one, higher price through recasting. Um, the financial terms definitely improve the market value. Um, it shows that sellers have some skin in the game, that they obviously believe in, the, in their business, and now, of course, it's going to uh, be dependent on who you like and who you think would do the best job. And when you have uh, some financing, that's, that's going to be very important to you. Um, potential tax savings. Most, a lot of sellers like the idea of only getting pay, only having to pay taxes on what they've received to date. So, you know, you're going to get a big hunk at closing, but then you're going to get payments every month, and you don't, you're not taxed on it until you receive it. Um, so, it's an income source. So, you may be starting something new afterwards, and you'd like that extra check being coming coming in, which is great. Um, since banks are tighter these days and it's a leaner market, it, in some cases it, it is the only way to sell the business is with seller financing. And it, it definitely changes the buyer-seller dynamics. Um, you have control. Uh, when you have a, a good-sized note, you are able to ask to see the monthly uh, financials. You want to be the first one to see, is there a problem, or is the mar are the margins changing drastically, or what's going on? You can get in there immediately. If the SBA is in first position and you're in second, you don't typically uh, ask for that, and the SBA isn't looking at it, believe it or not. And so if you did have some note tied up, you, you have more... Um, more control over the whole situation if you're in first position. 
but you have to ask yourself, are you comfortable financing? And if you're not, then you know all the um, the other elements have to be perfect before you really won't have to. Even SBA, in many cases, asks for the seller to at least have 5% in the game. They ask the buyers to put 20% down, a seller 5%, and they'll do 75% in most situations, if the buyer's qualified. Timing. So, I think it's pretty obvious, but you want to sell uh, when it's good to maximize your price. So last year I probably discouraged most, well definitely in 2010, that that was not the year to sell, um, that you wouldn't get a fraction of what your business would be worth if you waited a few more years. Um, but most um, buyers, lenders, and valuation companies want to look at the last three years results. Um, and if you don't have three years history, it's difficult to maximize that value. Uh, we get calls from people that have only been in business a year and said, you know, this is hard work. I'm having to put a lot of time in this. Um, and why they didn't realize that ahead of time, I'm not sure. But um, I have had um, SBA lenders say if the last two years are, are good, that they'll, they'll live with that because they knew that three years ago it was not a good time. Typically, before the recession, I was always our our group was always selling, able to uh, close a transaction uh, before six months. It was typically four to six months. Now it's six months to nine months, and uh, we've done some. It's even taken a year, and it's because there aren't as many buyers out there. And when the buyers are there, they're just much more cautious. So here are some tips to maximize uh, value for your business. Identify if there are things in your business that will turn off a buyer. Uh, get those taken care of now. So if your receivables are way out there, or if one employee is, is just key and he's 72 years old, you, know, you need to look at these things because these are things that buyers are looking about, at. And if you're doing everything and only have an assistant and um, it's really keeping you from growing, look and see if about hiring somebody that you could groom to be a general manager so that it's not all about you. Start getting some of your key employees involved with the clients. Um, you know, depending on what business we're talking about. But um, it's never too early to start analyzing your business with the end in mind. Um, so I think you're going to find that um, the more you spend time on now, it will increase your price later. Get your house in order. Um, I've seen some wonderful books that just didn't need anything and they were able to just pull them up immediately. And others, it, it will take a year because they haven't even kept records and they're having to recreate them from invoices and um, you, you wouldn't believe what we see out there. Um, if your facility, I know if it's a machine shop or a CNC uh, facility, um, you know, so, some cases it's, it's harder to keep your facility cleaner, but do everything you can, um, especially if a, a buyer is coming in when we're in the process of selling, uh, you're going to want to keep it looking best. Uh, first impressions are are very important. Any employee issues, uh, handle them now. Have updated financial statements. Um, if you own multiple locations, make sure your books are separate. Um, some people even have separate corporations uh, because you may want to sell them separately. But even if you would, they're very tied together, try to keep separate books. Um, declare all of your income and start at least one year prior to prior to sale doing that. I know some of the businesses are cash um, related and a lot of people say, well, you know, I, anything that's on credit card or um, people that send in checks or whatever, we, we put those in. But any, any cash, we just put that in our pocket. Well, when you think about it, yes, that means you haven't had to pay tax on it. But remember, instead of uh, whatever 30% bracket um, of your income tax, you're going to do better off getting the multiple that you could make from that by having it in your business. So if you're not doing it now, start doing it. Keep all the income in there. Um, and be able to articulate the advantage of owning your business versus others in your industry. 
see if there's some um, edge that you have over the others, and if not, what could you do to differentiate yourself? Buyers are going to be looking at that. Some do's and don'ts. When your business is being marketed, make sure if um, <laughs> that's why I advise all businesses do not work with real estate agents. Make sure they're business brokers or intermediaries because remember, real estate agents don't know the importance of confidentiality, and we do. So it's very important. You don't, um, you don't market the business's name. You uh, use blind names, blind summary, and unless they have, uh, a buyer has signed a confidentiality agreement, and make sure the broker has screened them to make sure they're uh, qualified financially. Otherwise, um, it, you know, it, could, it could really alert your competition, and then your competition can be talking that up out in the market to your customers and say, oh yeah, I hear Bob's, uh, Bob's selling. Um, so that's, that's one of the main reasons you really want to keep it confidential. Um, it's so important to price your business right. If, uh, if you know it's worth a half a million, why would you put it on the market for 700? Um, the phone won't ring because buyers know about multiples and they're going to see what your SDE is and they're going to go, what is, what's he thinking? Um, and just always ask yourself, would you buy it at that price? Keep it real. I definitely um, understand by pricing it a little higher when you put it on the market because buyers like to negotiate. I understand that, but it has to be within reason or the phone won't ring. Uh, don't let internal problems fester. Um, Buyers disdain red flags. Disclose everything to your broker and make sure that it's disclosed to the buyer. Um, if something major has happened to an account or if you know you're going to lose a major account in six months or if they're going overseas and no longer going to have you produce it, um, all that has to be disclosed. Um, we have not had any lawsuits in 15 years. And uh, I think it's because we're, we're so careful about that and educating our sellers to do the same. Um, <laughs> I've talked to some people that are so negative about their own business, um, you know, that I just let those negative Nellies know that, you know, if you talk like you've talked to me, to your buyer, no one will want to buy your business. So somehow shake off what's happened in the past. Um, Find some things that you do like about the business, but if you're, it's going to just, it'll kill the deal. It kills the deal more than any attorney or accountant can, and they often try to. So um, <laughs> just try to be as positive as you can about the business. Don't, uh, do be available to help uh, in the training of a new owner, depending on your business. That could be two months, uh, three months. It could be two weeks, depending on the business. And if you think you're going to be selling in the next two to three years, sprint to the finish. Finish strong. Really put all you have into it so that you can maximize what you get. Sell when business is good. And I know it's hard when you think, oh, we're having, these, we're having an amazing year coming next year. We're doing this. We're doing that. Sell when it's, when it's doing well, not when it's under. Uh, remember, each dollar in seller's discretionary earnings is multiplied to reach a selling price. Keep cash in the business. Um, do consult with your accountant and tax attorney. Are you financially ready? Um, do keep your business in compliance with all franchise standards if you're a franchise. So summary of some of the key points that we've uh, talked about is competition for resale will increase. So probably uh, doing it before the next five years will be in your favor. Prepare now to maximize that value later. Well-run, well-organized, profitable businesses sell for more. Sprint to the finish. Run your business like you have to sell it someday, and you will be right. Um, strategize with professionals. Um, I think that's key too. Take advantage of, um, of all the webinars that we have available to you. I'm more than glad to, uh, to spend some time with you talking about your business, looking at your financials to see, give you my broker opinion to see if it's um, the right time. But I think something that um, I wanted to show you this, uh, take advantage of this. We offer a sellability score um, free to our uh, potential sellers. And this is a 13-minute 
questionnaire that you can take, and you'll be amazed with how you're rated in quite a few different categories. So it will give you your overall score, um, let's say an 83 for sellability, and it'll break down into different categories of how you are as far as growth potential, financial performance, um, we call it the Switzerland structure, uh, structure you know, how uh, reliant on any one customer or employer or supplier are you. Um, there's just there's many different, like eight or ten different um, sections in it, but if you answer your questions honestly and realistically, I think it would be a very good tool for you just to see where you are and it would help you plan for the future. I'm going to uh, have each of your emails, I believe, so I will send you each a link uh, for the sellability score. Go ahead and take 15 minutes uh, to complete that, get it back, and then I'll call you to um, set up a time just to sit down for 20 minutes to go over that with you and so you'll know exactly where you stand. Uh, were there, I don't see any questions uh, in the chat chat box, um, so I think we've, we're almost at our time. I'm going to unmute you. I thought I was. Mute all. The conference has been unmuted. So if there is a question that you wanted to ask, I'm more than glad to address that. Okay, thank you all for being here today. Hopefully it was helpful and that you picked up one or two tips that might help you in the future. And feel free to call me if you have any direct questions that um, you'd like to talk about confidentially. And uh, I will get this sellability score questionnaire out to you today or tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Please stand by.